There is a loss of jobs in South Africa. In fact, from uh, low shading to job shading. I must call a pastor to take you out now. Greetings, the people of South Africa, Africa, and the diaspora, and thanks for tuning in to this week's installment of the EFF podcast. My name is Titus Tungur Kosanam Sengonotoleka. We're coming to you from Winnie Madigzela Mandela House. Today we're joined by the former EFF MP, Commissar Anthony Mantumba, as well as uh, the former VETS EFF uh, uh, Student Command SRC President, Oridiretsi um, Masebe. I call him Masebe. But yeah, uh, they're here in the building just to dissect the, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the uh, GNU, um, Bakalab, uh, welcome to the EFF podcast. <laughs> so, it's been just over 100 days of the, the so-called GNU. Um, you define it much better than me. You call it the ANC or rather the DA, ANC Grand Coalition. Now, let's just look at the progress thus far um it has been 100 days of this seventh administration uh, duped the gnu what are some of the key takeaways that um you have for this gnu uh, you see we we can't talk of uh, progress when there are no common goals uh, mm -hmm. because the, this is the relationship of um, of of two uh, political parties yeah. that represent two uh, opposite people. So there they can't be any progress. And that's why now what we see is, um, is the abuse of the ANC by DA and uh, the abuse of ANC members yeah. by their own secretary defending um, Helen Zille and her arrogance. So that's why... Yeah. For the first time, you see Afri Forum uh, being vocal and attacking uh, ANC uh, leaders who are opposed to this G GNU arrangement. So th th that's why you, you can't see any progress. The only thing that will, you will see is uh, the growth uh, of uh, white arrogance, uh, mm -hmm. of white supremacy. That's why you will see the likes of uh, John Stein Steinhazen uh, Metricless John Steinhays. Yeah, <laughs> you will see him going yeah. to uh, employ uh, DA white DA members the same way that uh, white people employ uh, uneducated white people in their farm in their farms mm -hmm. in restaurants in 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 supermarkets mm -hmm. without any qualifications. They are the bosses there. They are managers there. So yeah. the, he is doing exactly that in. A government, you just get a, a, a senior advisor, someone who's coming to advise. Advice on what when you do not have qualifications? So it's exactly what they are doing in their supermarkets. It's what they are doing in private yeah. uh, 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 space. So I, I I call it the the return of a job reservation act. Oh. It's uh, the return of uh, apartheid. Laws because Job Reservation Act was uh, reserving uh, jobs for white people. So John CNSN is doing exactly that because he's reserving jobs for undeserving white people where you have uh, black graduates yeah. with experience who can take over there. So, th so there is no any progress. In fact, it's it's regress. We are moving back from 1994. We are moving towards. Uh, 1652 now. Yeah, we're moving backwards. And when you look at the composition of uh, the cabinet ministers under the GNU, we have the ministers, uh, the likes of uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, who seeks to uh, attract, you know, foreign investors or inv investment through what he calls high-end skills and 
through that, he has just gazetted the visa. He called it the remote work visitor visa that seeks to sort of contribute to the economy through employing uh, people who uh, work remotely. I don't know what, 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 you, what your take is when it comes to the approach that is applied by the Minister of Home Affairs. Uh, like I've said, mm -hmm. uh, it is now 1910 in, in, in GA. Because you'll remember that uh, after the anglo Boer War and after the establishment of the Union of South Africa, there was a law which was passed, uh -huh. which is a Job Reservation Act. And after passing that law, uh, white ministers went to Europe yeah. to recruit white people to come to South Africa to... Mm. To, to, to add their numbers. They are doing exactly that. That now that we are in charge, we are going to reserve jobs for our people in Western Cape. We are going to reserve jobs for our people in the in uh, government departments that we are leading. We are going to, to, to recruit our people yeah. to come here in South Africa. So that's, that's, that's what they do. Uh, they create tension between uh, Africans so mm -hmm. that... Uh, less Africans can come in South Africa, then they go and recruit their own people in Europe and reserve jobs for them here in South Africa. If you are to go to Cape Town um, and look at uh, the Cape Metro, if they are reaching targets in terms of recruiting uh, black people in senior positions, they are not they are not uh, reaching that that target because. It, on its own, DA doesn't want to benefit yeah. uh, 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 black people at all. DA is now uh, uh, the conservative party in South Africa. But not only that, not only the minister of Home um, Affairs. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, who would have thought that the comrades of killers of Chris Hani will be a minister? I mean, the minister of um, correctional service was a member and a leader of Conservative Party. Now, which one is the Conservative Party? Conservative Party is a breakaway party from the National Party. They broke away from National Party when National Party was uh, engaged in the uh, reformation of apartheid and going to, moving towards the 1983 cameral par yeah. par tricameral yeah, parliament. Tricameral parliament. And yeah. the Conservative Party mm -hmm. said, you are too soft on black people. Mm. So therefore, when you are too soft on black people, we are moving away because we don't want to be soft on them. We love our apartheid, and the only thing that we want is apartheid laws to be tightened. Yeah. Uh, the the, the uh, minister of correctional service was a mayor of a um, conservative party. From mayor, he moved to, as member of parliament of the conservative party. Now, this is the very same conservative party that their leader and uh, the guy who shot uh, Chris Hani were convicted. Now, the very same conservative party that killed Chris Hani, today their leader is in uh, 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 our parliament and in uh, the executive. He is a minister as we speak. The yeah. man who said... He doesn't be, he believe in uh, uh, bringing back a uh, death penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who doesn't believe in the uh, correctional front plus. system. Peter yes. Hunerwald. Yes. Yeah. The guy who doesn't believe in the system, uh, who, who, who still believe in apartheid. The guy who, who, who is not apologetic about apartheid. The guy who see nothing wrong about apartheid. He said... What was done there was necessary during the time. So mm -hmm. this is the guy that is now the, 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 the minister. These are the kind of people who are working with uh, the, the ANC. So, uh, you know, it's, that's why we, we don't call it government of national unity because there is no any national uh, uh, unity there. It's a, yeah. it's a relationship between the sellout ANC yeah. and DA. Mm -hmm. Fighter already the right um Masebe <laughs> Masebe <laughs> from the Houting legislature, you're the researcher there. Your key takeaways from the GNU, it has just been over hundred days in office. <clears throat> well, I think uh what uh, Kondisa is saying is very true. Um, yeah. look at the people who are celebrating. 
mm -hmm. uh, positive outcomes from the first 100 days of the GMA, right? You've got uh, your CEOs of uh, Business First South Africa. You've got the CEO yeah. of Investec. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that are saying that, you know, the first 100 days have uh, somehow marked a positive upswing yeah. for South Africa, right? They tell you that, uh, the what is it, the, the JSE main index is over 10%. They tell you that the rent is 7.5% stronger. They tell you that, uh, um, you know, the bond market is 11% strong, right? Uh, they're saying the markets are doing well. They're saying we've gained investor confidence, right? But who are the people who are enjoying? Who are the people who are positively speaking about the first 100 days of the GNU? Yeah. It's people who are interested in, you know, pushing uh, the interests of, of private uh, entities and capital in the country, right? Ordinary South Africans are not talking about anything positive. Mm -hmm. If anything, ordinary South Africans are suffering from the budget cuts that have been introduced by the GNU ministers in education, in, develop, in social development, in infrastructure development. We've experienced budget cuts across departments. Yeah. The only people who are celebrating a hundred days of the GNU are those who are captains of the JSE and captains of, of capital and captains of private entities and private interest. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who can tell you that the rent is strengthened. What does that mean to ordinary South Africans? What does it mean to say that uh, the JSE main index has yeah. improved over 10%? Yeah. That means nothing to ordinary citizens mm -hmm. of this country. Mm -hmm. So those who are enjoying, those who are speaking positively about yeah. GNU should tell you what 100 days in the GNU actually means. It's not about South Africans. It's about the investors. It's about... The, the, the private capital is about those who, who, who are, in fact, more interested in their interests mm -hmm. being enlarged by this, uh, you know, Rama for you. Yeah. So no ordinary South African is celebrating any material difference because the prevailing social conditions in this country are still the prevailing social conditions. Mm -hmm. The people who are enjoying, the people who speak positively about the first 100 days of the GNU are those who are listed as your top earners, as owners of entities, as uh, protectors of private and capital. Mm -hmm. Should the people reject the GNU and what are some of the determinants that would lead to the collapse of the GNU in your view? Yeah. So I don't think that it, it would be, in, in, in a complex democracy like South Africa, it would be quite arrogant to want to you know, predict a downfall based on you know, the first 100 days. Mm -hmm. But as a socialist organization and someone who's socialist oriented, we know that there are things that fundamentally you cannot push and, and sustainably push uh, in order to run a society like South Africa. The GNU is going to collapse, one, because of their overemphasis on the market. This investor-centric idea that they have is going to push them to collapse because their main interest is to say, what is Investec saying? What is Discovery saying? What is APSA saying? And for as long as those are their priority points, at some point they are going to have a huge fallout between the real social and economic needs of the people as opposed to what their priority is, which is the market and what investors and investor confidence looks like. Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the things that is going to collapse the GNU in the long run is definitely going to be this investor-centric uh, approach. Mm -hmm. The idea that you must appease uh, the market at all costs the idea that the rent strengthening means that materially people on the ground benefit. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is going to collapse the GNU is definitely going to be the fact that they come from an abrasively divided political and ideological orientation, mm -hmm. right? So that on its own, because like like Commissar is saying, the DA pushes for a certain agenda, right? The DA wants to import specialized skills in the form of a racial policy that seeks to exclude the current labor market and the labor pool in the, in the country. The ANC wants to appease South Africans to say, we're going to have social reforms. We're going to talk about land. We're going to talk about distribution of social goods. Mm -hmm. So I I even on the basis of how far apart they are ideologically, this coalition is not going to last very long. Yeah. But you cannot just say from the 100 days that then I can predict that in a month or two, a few uh, you know, weeks' time, yeah. this is going to collapse. But I'm saying at the fundamental level and understanding of the society of this country, there's no way that that coalition is sustainable. And yeah. we are starting to see the cracks. Yeah. And talking about the cracks, we have uh, seen uh, the GNU partners being in loggerheads on policy issues. For example, you look at the NHI, you look at the, the Bella exactly. Act. Mm. Uh, that's where, even now, the DA has described the Bella Act as 
unconstitutional and unacceptable. Uh, if you look at clause four and five in the Bella Act, it has been deferred for further consultation, mm. and which means now the act is not in full swing mm. because of this uh, a GNU, and that tells you that the 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 partners that have aligned in the uh, GNU do not necessarily align ideologically. But looking at those cracks, what are we likely to see in the foreseeable? Uh, future when we look at uh, fundamental differences when it comes to the NHI when it comes to the Bella Act. So this is what this is exactly what I was I was referring to in the beginning that mm -hmm. they, they are they, they are fundamentally at loggerheads with each other mm -hmm. in terms of the political objectives mm -hmm. and the ideological background. Yeah. And uh, I mean you've got a PA character for example that really wants to you know put in the forefront very short term gains mm -hmm. very short term solutions in that ministry that uh, the PA is under. Yeah. Uh, and if, even in the Ministry of Police, very short-term gains that are being looked at, as opposed to the long-term and strategic uh, needs of South African society. So I think, for example, uh, the Bella Act or the Bella Bill mm -hmm. is one of the indications of the cracks in, 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 the, in, in the lack of ideological coherence and in the lack of ideological understanding <coughs> within the coalition. Mm -hmm. We still have a very extremist uh, PAC that you have now given uh, a power over land distribution and land restitution, right? And mm -hmm. the PAC has taken a very moderate approach to the first 100, year, uh, 100 days. Mm -hmm. But if you can listen to the rhetoric of the, the person leading the PAC in that ministry, <laughs> said that, yeah. no, all we're doing right now is to uh, sort of find our feet uh, look at the systems, mm -hmm. but we as a PSC stand opposed to the yeah. ideas that they have inherited as a ministry. Yeah. So the cracks are going to come from a policy perspective, from political objectives, even from ideological backgrounds. The cracks are just uh, uh, beginning. Yeah. I think that um, the Bella Act is is, 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 is is an act that is interested mm -hmm. in universalizing the public education system yeah. of this country. I don't see a lot of wrong with the Bella Act, but I see that what the real opposition uh -huh. from the DA Freedom Front quarter uh -huh. of, of the Bella Act is, is that it, it, it sort of shrinks their level of superiority and it shrinks what they feel is important as a culture, right? Because one of their biggest uh, uh, you know, fighting points was that white people in this country and Africaners in particular do not have spaces yeah. where they can maintain and sustain and practice their culture. But you are now saying that a public education uh, area is supposed to enshrine and protect that. Whereas the constitution of this country does not say that public schools must enshrine a particular culture. They say that public schools, as any other public institution, must enshrine the collective culture of the country. Mm -hmm. So you will start to realize that even on, 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 on mere things like universalizing a, a public education system, yeah. the, 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 you know, the, 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 the narcissist, supremacist ideas start to pop out. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing with the... Uh, universal health care that was proposed actually by the EFF a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. They are opposed to it because they feel like it is going to constrict the ability of private medical providers to operate and profit from yeah. society. Whereas that bill is merely saying let us get equal or at least something that looks like equal universal yeah. health care mm -hmm. access. Absolutely. Commissar, I want to come to you now. Should we be calling the DA flip-floppers of note? Because you would remember Prior to the elections, they were against Ramaphosa. They were calling him, uh, uh, to, they were calling on him to step down on the Palapala matter. But as soon as they were part of this grand coalition, they then softened their tone. And even on the issue of NHI as well, the the energy is dying down. But when you look at the implementation of the Bella Bill, they have threatened to withdraw, walk out from the GNU, and all of that. How can we best describe this? Um, DA is it's, it's a party without backbone. <laughs> uh, the best description ever. And uh, it doesn't have identity. It's an um, amoeba. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a liber liberal party mm -hmm. that whoever found the DA is the DA. So you will understand from from DA being a progressive part. That's why it has changed. It's a, that, that's why it, it can it can grow. Uh, 
what it does it it swallow other parties and merge and merge with them from da being progressive party from da being dp and um, joining uh, these other parties like uh, id uh, that 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 is what uh, 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 da is so that's why you will find that uh, they have a problem of wanting to look like a party that represents black people so then it will have put one bl black leader for a uh, window dressing then from there dump that leader because black white people inside the da are not comfortable so uh, da is it's is what the the funders want it to be they, they they don't represent anyone except the funders if you are to look um at da policies you will be you will be shocked uh, it, it's just that media do not uh, speak of or write about da policies the same way they write about nationalization of land without compensation the same way they write about because once we said nationalization of land without compensation media was very much quickly to interpret it as if we are going to do exactly what is was done in zimbabwe when we when when, zimbabwe. when 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 we speak of um our um open border po policy they are very much quick to vulgarize the 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 the, 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 the policy but they don't speak of 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 da policies da if you are going to read these policies they 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 want to 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 return the time of of slavery they want us to do away with uh, uh, lab labor brokers national uh, minimum wage everything like that so that is what da is mm -hmm. you 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 are talking of what you know about da but deep down if media is to speak about da the same way they speak about eff no one was going to vote uh, for for da so they are worse you can't call them uh, flip floppers they are worse than that because if they are to speak their policies directly and we leave them and say da here's the mic give us your policies directly you 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 will be shocked i mean when it comes to uh, uh, education policy mm -hmm. da want uh, banks to take over uh, funding students they want students to get loans from 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 banks they don't even speak of free education they despise free education so it's it's something that media don't come out to say da is against free education mm -hmm. because in their policy the policies they are clear they don't say free education they mm -hmm. say banks must be the ones that take over from nefsas and students must get loans from uh, uh, banks but media don't don't talk about that. But once EFF say open border policy, they come and vulgarize it and make sure that they use it against the EFF without giving the EFF ample time to explain the policy. Mm -hmm. What do you understand uh, the open border policy to be? Because uh, this is one of the topical issue, if you like, that has made headlines. Uh, more than once, uh, people accusing or saying the EFF has lost votes because of the, you know, uh, border policy issue and all of that. Do you think there's something wrong with the approach of the EFF when it comes to immigration policy? Uh, the border policy of EFF is uh, it's unity of Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, when the EFF say open border policy M many people think eff want to remove this uh, non existent uh, fence i mean environmentalists will fight with us to say why do you remove the fence because that's how we manage uh, environmental crisis well from corona not so long there is foot and mouth disease if you don't even in south africa we have foot and mouth disease borders if you are to go between uh, Gaba and uh, in in there between Gaba and um, um, uh, Minga, mm -hmm. there's a border there, a border. You will find a border gate. Yeah. In in inside South Africa, so we are not talking about the fence. When we talk about open border policy, we are talking about opening economic borders. We are saying when a truck driver is driving from here 
to Zambia? Why must he change currency in every country that he, 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 he passed? You change the um, uh, uh, your passport in every country. I mean, what the EFF is proposing is something that is being done in, 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 in Europe. The EFF is saying, as Africans, let's have one military. Let's have one currency. That is going to be the strong currency. I mean, why do you have to 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 have a currency of Lesotho, South Africa, and 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 Botswana? And this will protect our countries. I mean, imagine Botswana or Lesotho yeah. uh, uh, going to uh, negotiate anything with America with a uh, population of, of 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 people who are less than the population of uh, uh, a Tequin. So. That's what the EFF is talking about. The EFF is saying, let's use one passport. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 there's nothing uh, that the EFF is proposing that is not done in Europe. Because Europe, it's, they are united behind Europe. They are united behind a uh, uh, European Union uh, uh, passport. Uh, they, they are united behind uh, one uh, that arrangement of NATO. Yeah. So... That, that, that is what the EFF is, 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 is proposing. The EFF is saying, why don't we sell to Zimbabwe before, why don't you we buy and sell to Zimbabwe before we buy and sell to uh, America? What, what is wrong about that? And some people who don't uh, read will say, no, Africa is too big to, 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 to administer. The population of China and India are bigger than the population of Africa combined. So it means it's possible because everywhere people of China go, they are united behind one China. They speak different languages. They are of different tribes. But because they are Chinese, they are one people. So even us, we are the only people who are uh, 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 not united. Indians are united under India. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Europeans are un un united on their own. Africans are the ones who are not united. It's, you have uh, Ghana here, you have Nigeria here. I mean, we hate each other over who is a Zimbabwean and who is a South African. I mean, mm -hmm. so th what the EFF is proposing, it's Africans must unite and be one thing exactly like Indians, like Europeans, like, uh, like the Chinese. So... Yeah. Uh, many people, uh, those who don't understand this policy, will say we want to open the borders. Yeah, the floodgates. Uh, the gate that yeah. is non existent. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a gate, but there's no fence. Yes. <laughs> the crazy situation. Now, um, or the reads. Now, let's look at what the EFF stands for. The EFF is a proponent, strong proponent, proponent of uh, socialism, and it has proven itself to be against neoliberal uh, anti-black state, uh, talking about the bourgeoisies and all of that, we have what we call uh, the progressive left. Uh, what do you understand the role of the progressive left in the South African politics? And what would you say the EFF this is what the EFF has done to maintain its stance of uh, being uh, there for the marginalized and the poor. <coughs> okay, so Chagas, you're asking me two questions. <laughs> what do I understand about the EFF's role in the progressive left? Mm -hmm. Or what do I understand as the EFF having done over its past 11 years for the marginalized and the poor? Okay. Because I think yeah. there is a misconception ever since small Nyana parties had some miracle <laughs> uh, performance in the last <laughs> electoral outcomes yeah. that they are actually you know a uh, consistent progressive uh, leftist parties we can't we can't we can't be so quick to denote that term for a party that's less than 12 months the EFF is and remains the only progressive left party in this country because for 11 years it has consistently been that progressive leftist party 
others that came 15 months ago, they, there's no, they, 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 what, what, what yardstick do you use to measure if they are really indeed a progressive leftist organization? Or maybe they are posturing themselves yeah. because of a specific desire in terms of electoral outcomes. So I don't want us to confuse it. In, this, in, in the South African context, there's only one consistent leftist organization, which has been the Economic Freedom Fighters. Uh, because you must also now uh, dilute us from those uh, like the PAC who have been progressive leftists, but only because they still have some data to post speeches about what the current president is saying because they've got contestation about who's the actual president. And then they attend a lot of funerals in the PAC. So when we, <laughs> we, 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 must, we must dissolve ourselves from this the, the notion <laughs> of the progressive left. Yeah. Currently, as it stands in the, in, in, in the, in the dynamic of South African politics, mm -hmm. and on the spectrum, the EFF is the only progressive left organization. Mm -hmm. And I think our 11 years has, 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 has bad testament to that. I mean, yeah. we are the only organization that goes and finds in a remote uh, area, uh, you know, disabled households, uh, households that are, I mean, uh, households that are le uh, led uh, by disabled people, households that are child-headed, Households that have got absolutely no source of income don't even qualify for you know the, the most basic level of social grants. The EFF will identify those kinds of uh, households and intervene yeah. with its own money, by the way, yeah. with its own resources. Yeah. The EFF is the only organization that has pushed for progressive motions from your local government municipality council level towards your provincial legislature up to the uh, national assembly level. Pushed progressive left-leaning motions that are in favor of the marginalized of this country. The EFF is the only organization that has said, by necessity and by policy, we will always adhere to a strict zebra policy yeah. in order to make sure that we, we, we reflect the gender demographic of this country and make sure that black women in particular are not just part of a bunched up previously disadvantaged uh, population, but they find representation in the seats of authority and power. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been doing that for 11 years. In this very province, in this very city, we've advocated successfully for a motion that insourced, uh, you know, uh, security guards, uh, over 2,500, over 2,000 security guards were insourced because of a progressive motion yeah. uh, pushed by the EFF. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we've done. I mean, I can go on, I can go on, unless sure. you've got another <laughs> two, two more days to reflect yeah, this. Yeah, and I want to tap into this. I want to hear what the commissar will have to say. So, Looking at the progressive left, we now have the progressive so-called um, hostel, and there are claims that they are members of the EFF that are joining the other side or the hostel. Uh, can we verify that, uh, Commissar, you being on the ground with the people? Uh, is there any verifiable data that there are EFF members that are joining the um, MK in large numbers? Uh, you know, it's it's a matter of excitement. <laughs> it's a matter of it's a matter of excitement, and uh, you know, every time uh, EFF gets to be compared to regional uh, and uh, tribal uh, arrangements, EFF it's a party that exists nationally. Uh, so, we, when we are compared. You know, when we have worked like this, if you are going to look at uh, EFF, uh, the votes that we have received, we have members of parliament in all legislatures, and we don't have one one. It's uh, <laughs> we we have we don't have less than less than uh, uh, it's it's one it's two in uh, Northern Cape. Mm. We have registered growth there. We have registered growth in the heart of uh, racism, in the heart mm -hmm. of uh, white superiority in Western Cape. In Western Cape. We mm -hmm. registered growth. Mm -hmm. We even have a, a word that we are governing there. We, we, we have registered growth in, 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 Free, Sta in Free State and uh, Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. So we are represented at nationally. Now, Go and look at the votes of IFP in 1994. You will find them in three provinces. In KZN, majority, where they even won the province, right? Mm -hmm. In Mpumalanga and in KZN. The rest of the provinces, they, 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 they don't have. 
go then and look at votes of the MK. It's in KZN, Mpumalanga, and Gauteng. In Northern Cape, nothing. In Western Cape, nothing. If you are to say, no, white people there are not voting for them and colors. Okay, let's go there in Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. where it's, it's, it's rural. They received one seat. So you can see that, let's go to Limpopo, one seat. Northern, Northwest, one seat. So EFF, it's, 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 it's a party that is contesting at national level. Because we are a official opposition in Limpopo. Mm -hmm. We are ahead of DA in Limpopo. We are official opposition in Northwest, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we... MK can be number three, but in provinces, we are ahead of it in, in seven provinces. So their vote is a pool of regional votes of KZN. Now, let's talk about members who are leaving. You will find that it's either we went to elections with them, uh, they were removed in election structures for laziness, right? Mm. We removed them. It's either we didn't give them a position, parliament position. <laughs> then they, so if they were genuine about joining the MK, they would have done it before elections. Mm. So mm. it's only now that they didn't calculate that, no, this is a regional party. They think that it is the next thing, not knowing that uh, IFP was exactly the same. It was even better because they had a province. Mm -hmm. So the death of it is going to start in all these provinces that do not have their voters. Then come Mpumalanga, come Gauteng, then it declined in KZN. You know why? Because politicians aspire to lead at national level. Mm -hmm. So when you are a provincial chairperson of the party in Limpopo, <laughs> you, you are going to be the same as the regional chairperson of EFF because you won't be leading anyone. And now the careerists and opportunists who are joining currently, once they realize or no, there's nothing to eat here, and even when we have positions, we are controlling nothing. There's no budget to control. They move out. So when you have a political, when you start a political party, you are joined by two people, activists and careerists. Mm. Now, when they see that there are no positions, careerists will leave. Activists will remain. Now, the EFF, because it is rooted in its ideology, we have activists who remain in EFF knowing that we are Marxists and Leninists. We stand with this progressive party. Whether there are positions or not, we join it in, uh, in Western Cape, we join it in Northern Cape, and even when opportunists left, the party is, <coughs> is growing. Because are you, are you aware that the EFF in only two provinces, it didn't reach the 10%. It's in KZN, right? Mm -hmm. And Western Cape. And in Western Cape, it's where we are rising. Mm -hmm. In all these provinces, we're not below 10% in these provinces. So... Our decline was only in KZN. And because KZN is a big pool of voters, mm -hmm. we, that decline affected us at national level. But in reality, in provinces, this organization is growing. And these people that we are told that EFF members are leaving, I, I mean, it's a joke. In November, <laughs> they, uh, you know, uh, we are called uh, by EFF members. They say, hey, you know, I think there is a mistake. We were invited to an event where we were told we are coming to cook 
and we are given these t-shirts. We don't <laughs> understand what is happening. We want we, we we didn't leave any organization. So we are not even going to welcome them back or anything because we understand the confusion. So okay. they, there is no they, 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 there is no any any crisis of saying there are EFF members who are leaving. It's 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 um, a a crisis that uh, they they want to yeah, to, to, to yeah. yeah to create that there are members of EFF who are leaving. We are here. We are members <laughs> of EFF who are here. And and yeah and so so so, so you so <laughs> it's only few individuals yeah. mm -hmm. who were deployed and opportunities who were deployed in parliament. Mm -hmm. They we, we these people we went in the same meetings with them. They've never raised what they are raising today when they were still in parliament and when they were still in positions. But now they are telling us of this EFF that we don't know about. But mm -hmm. genuine EFF members are there. They exist. Mm -hmm. They lose these positions and they get to understand. Mm -hmm. Why? Because EFF have more than one million members. Even if we are to win 100%, parliament require 400 mm -hmm. members of parliament. So even if we win, not all of us are going to go there. So these people, we were going to lose them. Even if we win this government, we were going to lose them, to, to lose them because we can't give, we can't reward everyone. And it shows that they do not understand what the EFF is fighting for. Because when they give reasons why they are leaving EFF, they don't say EFF is not doing for the people what it say is going to do for them. Mm -hmm. They say, I worked hard. So the EFF is not doing one, two, three. They speak about self. They don't say EFF is doing wrong to the people. EFF is doing wrong mm -hmm. to me. So you can see that... that the careerists <laughs> and, and and things like this <laughs> yeah must happen and we are happy that they are happening now they are yeah. still going to join so many uh, parties uh, just <laughs> wait you will see yeah and why commissar people may be wondering you you were an mp for 2 years but now you're no longer uh, deployed in parliament and one wonders what what spirit guides you what spirit keeps you within the movement unshaken uh that that's one thing that I'm happy about, I I was deployed in Harib, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in my deployment through elections, I was not removed. Mm -hmm. The votes of Harib where I was deployed didn't decrease. They increased, right? In Mohokari, we, DA was number two. EFF is, uh, is now number two. What I understand is that the leadership of the EFF, the collective guidance of the EFF, guided us from 2013 up until today. It can't be right that they are only wrong when they don't deploy me to parliament. Yeah. <laughs> because when I was a member of parliament, Commissar Manza was not a member of parliament. Commissar Mbali was not member of parliament. Commissar Sharon were not members of parliament. Now that they are members of parliament and I'm not member of parliament, I must fight the organization to say, hey, something is wrong. It was not wrong when I was inside. Mm -hmm. It became wrong when, I was, when I'm now outside of the system. It means, it means I don't understand what I joined this organization for. Because if we are to leave this organization, let it be on the basis of that the organization is dumping the founding manifesto. They are saying, eh, eh, we don't want this founding manifesto. Mm -hmm. We are adopting the policies of DA now or we are joining DA. Yeah. Then we'll understand that it is no longer the EFF that we've joined. But this organization is doing exactly the same. I'll give you one example that is critical and is critical in Limpopo. And it's on democratic centralism. Because democratic centralism is not only democratic centralism. It says you have freedom, but freedom with responsibility. The freedom to practice democracy with responsibility. Mm -hmm. And there will be centralism where 
the leadership will take democratic decisions and align them to party line. Mm -hmm. Now, in Eastern Cape, they went and elect an all May top five. Yeah. It means is they practiced their democracy and freedom without responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then the central command team must do what? Must align uh, their decisions with the party line. Because the party line is saying, like what he said, zebra approach. Zebra approach. Mm -hmm. What did those comrades do? They accepted it, went and worked, and in, in, increased the votes of the organization in uh, Eastern Cape. So that uh, wisdom of the organization saved us in Eastern Cape. The same thing was done in Limpopo. The, the leadership went in to say, we, that, this, that which you have elected, you were not responsible enough. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. they corrected. Yeah. After being corrected, comrades are not doing what those comrades in Eastern Cape did mm -hmm. to say, we accept democratic centralism. We accept freedom and democracy with responsibility. The first thing they did is to do what? No, we're leaving. Mm. So, but we know that it was practiced in Eastern Cape. It worked. It was done in Limpopo and it is starting to show that it is working because they're leaving. Because yeah. they're leaving because they do not understand this thing that they've joined. Mm -hmm. so, it, it, so, and they say it's what? It's Unconstitutional. Unconstitutional, why? Because they don't read. If you go and read the constitution of the EFF, you will find democratic centralism yeah. in the constitution. Yeah. So that so 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 we are we are here to stay because the organization is still the same organization that we have joined. Yeah. And we know that this organization that um we have joined mm -hmm. even all revolutions were not realized in three days we are doing this for a generation mm -hmm. we don't are not doing this to reap the benefits because if we are doing that we would have been in gnu now with uh, uh, freedom front club yeah with wokronevald <laughs> <laughs> yeah and let's look now at the um, build up towards the third people national people's assembly uh, looking at the discussion document um, it talks about the devolving of the EFF student command into a youth uh, command um, we have seen the progress done by the EFF student command uh, you know dominating at 17 out of the 24 universities in South Africa now, what is your understanding or your reaction to this announcement by the CIC that now, henceforth, there will be consideration that the EFF student command should be devolved into a youth command? <coughs> sure. I don't know why, because I'm not even a delegate to MTA. <laughs> 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 I am not going to contest delegation. <laughs> yeah. in my but I think like the CIC has been very consistent of late when it comes to Mm -hmm. uh, his personal views and his capacity as a president towards NPA to say I don't want to uh, mar uh, attitudes towards the NPA. I think he, he came out very strongly to uh, uh, to clarify uh, that when he speaks in, in his capacity the CIC about certain recommendations or certain suggestions that he has, those suggestions and those recommendations are still subject to the actual process mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. the National People's Assembly. And I think that uh, it was not a declaration that the student command will be dissolved, if I had the CSU correctly today. Mm -hmm. He said that this is one of the... Uh, discussion documents. Discussion yeah. is, it is, 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 a, is in the package, mm -hmm. uh, in the discussion document, about the future of uh, the student command. Because um, maybe that might be a precursor to say we're now going to usher in the youth command. Mm -hmm. So I think... Look, I'm a, I'm, I'm a product of the student command. 
and uh, I value my experiences and my teachings from the student command. I would not particularly like to see the student command being dissolved. But I do agree that uh, the student command has a certain limitation of scope in terms of the young people it can reach in society and in communities. Yeah. And uh, we've been limited to the gates of the TVET colleges and the university campuses to such an extent that the vacuum that has been left from young people in the communities is now starting to, to, to sort of affect uh, even the direction that young people are supposed to take politically and ideologically in the country. So I think that the timing is quite perfect, mm -hmm. uh, the introduction of the conversation of the youth command. But in as far as the complete dissolution of the student command, I would not see how that would then cover the real uh, uh, you know, need for the student command on campuses across South Africa. I think that that is a vehicle and a tool that young people have found access to on campuses, and it has really... Uh, assisted them in terms of their own needs. You know, you come from uh, Malamulele or you come from uh, Nongoma, you're mm -hmm. a first year student. You don't want to bump into someone wearing a yellow t shirt. <laughs> I can yeah. guarantee you that because yeah. that is the beginning of your destruction mm -hmm. as a young person. You are going to be asked for money that you, your parents do not have. You're going to be uh, indignified and violated because of sexual favors. So the student command on campuses has really been the vanguard of, you know, delivering and ushering dignified service for young students on campuses. I don't think that is a vehicle and a tool that we need to withdraw from those campuses, specifically because of the vulnerability of young people who are coming from a space that they are completely unfamiliar to. Yeah. I think the student command is quite necessary and quite relevant. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I do believe that the limitation that the student, student command has in reaching young people in our communities must be filled mm -hmm. by the youth command. Yeah. How those two will coexist, I'll, I'll, I'll consult with my branch delegate and say, <laughs> yeah. please submit this, Yeah, and also what the, the, the CIC, the message was trying to echo through the discussion document is that he doesn't want to create or doesn't the EFF doesn't want to create a situation where there's SASCO and ANC youth league kind of a situation. But Commissar is here to give us a clarity of thought <laughs> and <laughs> on uh, uh, as 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 a prospective delegate I'd like to, to, to believe towards the conference. Um what are your thoughts on the devolving of uh, EFF student command into the youth command? What we do not want to see is a situation where students are isolated and issues of students are isolated for students to deal with them alone. Because once students are isolated, we know what happened in the Paris Commune where uh, the working class was isolated and ambushed. So we don't want the same. We want a situation where when there is fees must fall at the University of Limpopo, that fees must fall must be for all youth. Mm -hmm. Schools will close. Youth who have never been at university will go to university to say, those that are fighting, we are with them because we are now one thing. Mm -hmm. So that issues of education uh, and unemployment, we work with, the, we deal with them as one thing. Mm -hmm. So, Student command will continue to contest elections. But student command in a branch where in, it, if it's Ward 5 and it, that Ward 5, there's university, even youth outside the university will have to join the student command, the, 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 the youth command. So that, that's, that's, that's what we want to see. Uh, and... We are avoiding a situation in the in the Progressive Youth Alliance, mm -hmm. let me say the PYA, where SASCO is contesting, yeah. ANC Youth League is contesting, YCL is contesting, SOCA is contesting, because they do not know their roles. So we want one vanguard of uh, young people. Are you giving us a conference resolution? <laughs> <laughs> it's a proposal. It's a proposal. It's a proposal. So that's why. It's not final. That's why I, I will have to go before this man to be um, not a delegate but a, a guest. Yeah. <laughs> so that, it must yeah. be a bystander there. Yes. <laughs> We're not giving him a tag. <laughs> yeah. So 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 that's what we want. We 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 want youth to be to be united. 
yeah. under one banner because we have seen it doesn't it doesn't work. That thing of having Kosa, Sasko, Suka, and all of them. we want them to be one thing and fight as a as a, a you as one thing because I mean, look, there there, there is a, there is a slogan uh, that is used to say, Tivets must rise, right? But if you look at Tivets must rise, you will find that it's something that even require youth who are not in Tivets. Because you can't industrialize without Tivets rising. So when we fight for industrialization, we also have to fight for Tivets to rise, to rise because Tivets are the ones that are going to be the human resource mm -hmm. of this industrialization. I'll give you an example with Makado as a special economic zone. The first thing that they have to do, they did was to take young people to China to be trained. Mm -hmm. But how many Tivets are there in in at, at, uh, in, 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 in Limpopo? There are many. Mm -hmm. So this is a revolution that requires unity of youth, mm -hmm. not students only, but even those that yeah. are outside. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and as we, we try and wrap up, uh, uh, Commissar, and uh, fighter underrated. Let's look at the ideology of socialism. Socialism as an economic model. Uh, do you think it can solve South African problems such as unemployment, poverty, and inequality as opposed to what the GNU is doing currently? Uh, beneficiaries of uh, state intervention, beneficiaries of government are the ones that point fingers at black people today to say black people love free things. Black people want to be assisted by government. If it was not for the state, white people were not going to have land because it is the uh, parliament of white people only that passed the law to say 1913 Natives Land Act. It is government that passed the Glen Gray Act. It is the government that passed the uh, 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 Job Reservation Act. So for white people to be where they are today, there was intervention of the state. Now that the ANC has lost its identity and uh, they, 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 they speak as if a private sector is the Messiah that is going to assist. It's not going to happen. Maybe, let, let, let me take you back. In the analysis of material conditions back then, mm -hmm. didn't we say uh, South Africa is a colony of special type where the colonized and the colonized, the, uh, the, where the colonized and the colonizer are staying in one place? And therefore, the economic infrastructure of white people is not in of or the of the colonizer is not in any way meant to benefit the oppressed who are black people right mm -hmm. that is when the freedom charter was adopted the freedom charter was adopted after that analysis of saying the economic infrastructure yeah. of the oppressor or the colonizer is not in any way meant to benefit. So it means we the Freedom Charter was adopted while appreciating the fact that the economy in its current form is not meant to benefit black people. They are not going to benefit. That is why in 1969 in Morogoro Conference, responding to the Freedom Charter on how the Freedom Charter was going to be achieved, the ANC adopted the National Democratic Revolution. Revolution. Mm -hmm. And what did they say they want to achieve? They said, we want to achieve National Democratic Society. They didn't say rent bond machine. They said National Democratic Society. And how are they going to uh, achieve it? By demolishing this economic infrastructure, mm -hmm. which 
is not meant in any way to benefit the oppressed. Now, there are some people of uh, some uh, hostel who say <laughs> radical economic transformation. Yeah. That is misguided. Mm -hmm. Misguided how? What is it that you want to transform? Have we built our economy? Mm. So, so some when, of, some when of, you... Some of them were in, in, in this picture. We remove it. We so remove so, it. so <laughs> w when you say radical yeah. economic transformation... Which economy do, do you want to transform? You want to transform that economy that we said is not meant to benefit the oppressed. You want to transform a Standard Bank. You want to transform APSA. You can't transform which, that which was built mm -hmm. to oppress you. So it means we need to, to go through the phase that the ANC diverted from. Because the ANC was supposed to come to the second phase, which is socialism. Mm -hmm. Because as a liberation movement, they have to unite black people towards liberation. And when they've gained this liberation, you have to take them through a process called socialism. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the state must come in to uplift us. The state must come in and hold yes. our hand. The state must be a tool that is going to be used by us mm -hmm. because the state was used as the tool to oppress us, right? Mm -hmm. So when we win the state, what do you, we do? We use it as a tool to uplift and liberate, and liberate uh, uh, black people. So th that's why we need socialism. We need the state to come in. That's why we say we need the state to be the custodian of the land. Because, Titus, if I give you the land now, you don't have money and you don't appreciate the value of the land, you are going to sell it. That's why True. DA is first to, to say, give them title deeds. Because they know they have money to buy and hmm. we are not yet to appreciate. Yeah. Go to China. You will find that the biggest manufacturing companies state owned mm -hmm. so 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 we need the state the, the, the very same people before they passed the 1913 mm -hmm. natives land act what did they do first uh, the uh, land bank so that the land bank must fund the development of the stolen land, land. Mm -hmm. so we need state intervention. Not only that, Cyril Ramaphosa go and open a, a factory there. Very happy. Open a factory of cell phone manufacturing. Mm -hmm. but, but instead of coming to borrow our cardinal pillar of massive, protected massive industrial development, mm -hmm. he go and do his own other things. What happened to that company? Factory. It collapsed. Because the There's state no failed yeah. to protect mm -hmm. that industry mm -hmm. from outside manufacturers. So we need the state to protect us. We need the state to fund us. Mm -hmm. We need the state to take us through these things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a word that Cyril Ramaphosa use every day. And to show that that man, I wonder, but I'm, I'm happy he used that language because Cyril Ramaphosa is not the product of the ANC. Mm -hmm. Because when he was detained, Cyril was a member of uh, some student, uh, Christian what what. Yeah. And now, this is the word that they use. They say, we are building inclusive economy. Black people never said they want to be included in anything. Do you want to be included where your colonizers are eating? So that's where EFF come in. Mm -hmm. The EFF, the reason the EFF is the most hated political organization in this country by white people and our oppressors is because the EFF do not want inclusive economy. The EFF want black people to build their economy. The EFF doesn't have a dream of 
black people sitting or begging for a table on white man's chair mm -hmm. or white man's table. The EFF want to build its own table yeah. so that they have their table there. We have our table here. We eat like this. We go and eat that side. They go and eat this side. Yeah. That's, that, and lastly, how the EFF, when talking about socialism, mm -hmm. the EFF want to build the economy where you are. Because as much as every day, Titus, you take a bus to town. That is the stress of a black person. Every black person, the first stress that they have, it's either rent, bond, or transport. Because they have to live where they are to go and participate in the white man's economy. So the EFF wants you to participate in your own economy where you are. Yeah. The EFF want to see buses of white people moving to town to come and work yeah. where you are and us going that side. That's what the EFF want to see. So that's the hatred they have over the EFF because so the EFF is yeah. decolonizing because the EFF believe in black people that black people must have their own economy where they are. The EFF doesn't want you to dream that your dream is to be next to a white person in suburb. Yeah. The EFF want to build suburb where you are. Mm -hmm. The EFF want to build a factory where you are. So mm -hmm. that's the hatred they have over the EFF because the EFF doesn't talk like Cyril Ramaphosa and say, we want exclusive economy because exclusive economy is a begging economy. Yeah. We say, we want to be included. Absolutely. How do we get included by minority when we are majority? Yeah. We, they must beg us that they want to be included. Mm -hmm. And capitalism has maintained its uh, grip on the economy, South African economy, over the years. Dire, your thoughts on uh, socialism. Do you strongly believe that uh, the economy of South Africa should be in the hands of uh, blacks, Africans in particular, if we are really serious about addressing the issues of inequality, because we understand that socialism, among other things, advocates for the ownership of the means of production by the state. Yeah. But I think Commissar has answered that. <laughs> <laughs> Your thoughts? No, I think, look, uh, black people in South Africa want socialism, right? I think that there's just a huge misconception on what socialism means and what socialism looks like mm -hmm. because of the examples of African states that have tried, you know, to push mm -hmm. a, a a very purely socialist agenda. Yeah. And because of that point of reference, it makes it easy to decampaign a reality of socialism. But in actual fact, a majority of South Africans are beneficiaries of some form of socialism. Because when you go and take your child in grade R, right, in... in, 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 in about uh, early childhood development, mm -hmm. right? The government funds a meal every day for that child. Yes. Mm -hmm. That child then goes to grade one. From grade one to grade seven, the government funds a meal for that child. That's Even the, they call it f f nutritional feeding scheme. Yeah, feeding scheme. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even buy a uniform. Mm -hmm. They even give that child textbook. Mm -hmm. The child graduates grade seven, they go to grade 12, they get NS funds. When they get NS funds, they go to UJ. They study for free, right? The whole time your mother has been getting what is called a child grant in order to sustain your livelihood. When you get to grade 12, you pass grade 12, you go to UJ, you are given an NS first bursary, right? So the, 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 the complete cycle of this person into adulthood has been funded by the state. But because we don't have the language in South Africa to explain that as a form of socialism, People say, no, can't, you know, what is socialism? No. It means that you know, we're not going to be equal with white people. They're demonizing you it. Know, they demonize it because of the points of reference mm -hmm. that they can you know, uh, point to. Somehow, translate to them as that socialism is a failed you know, system of government in terms of social and economic policy. But in reality, majority of South Africans are products of a socialist uh, 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 you know, uh, ideological um, good, so social good. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that... Uh, we can get more people like Commissar on platform to explain really what yeah. is socialism. Yeah. Because I think we over we overcomplicated and you know we can, we get a lot into the abstract and then mm -hmm. people don't understand what socialism means. But yeah. the, but but the reality is that 
socialism most basic principle is also its most strongest yeah. to each according to his need from each according to his ability mm -hmm. very simple but very pragmatic because what we are saying in the south african context is that we will never catch up in the current economic setup we will never catch up with white people if we are still trying to be included in an economic infrastructure that was not designed for us mm -hmm. at best what we will do is pass the basic minimum we'll mm -hmm. always have a 50 percent type of existence you know when you pass the measure 50 percent mm -hmm. at least to zamil but is that an existence that a majority of an oppressed people in a country must aspire to to say i i i, I just survive I, I i'm at the bare minimum of what the, the the economic and social and productive means of this country are able to output you, you are happy that you stayed in an apartment. So who do you think is a gatekeeper here? What stops South Africa to fully implement or practice socialism? Is it because the EFF is not yet in power? Yeah, but I think the, a, a lot of the rhetoric around socialism is also a huge barrier. Because mm -hmm. you go to the manifesto of the EFF, you go to the rallies of the EFF, you go to the policy positions that the EFF has presented in public, they've been consistent about the benefits of socialism and what socialism means in our context. But I think the narrative against socialism as a concept is a very big uh, eliminating factor because people assume that when the EFF speaks about socialism, we're, talking about, we're, we're trying to achieve a solidarity of poverty. That is not what we are saying. We're not saying all of us must be poor, right? We're saying all of us must be equal, but mm -hmm. must not be equal Quality. in poverty, mm -hmm. you know? We're saying that access to economic opportunities must be the same across the line. Yeah. We're saying it does not matter the color of your skin does not matter the access you've had to these economic yeah. opportunities in, 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 in history yeah. and so on. But I think that the, 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 there is a, 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 a narrative protection uh, uh, you know, around white interests mm -hmm. that always tries to demean uh, what, what, what the EFF is trying to say. Because yeah. socialism means, like you're saying, an aggressive industrialization strategy. Mm -hmm. That means automatically job creation. Mm -hmm. Socialism means an aggressive opportunity Jobs opportunity strategy. Mm -hmm. The EFF is saying we must build our own state-owned enterprises in, 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 in horticulture to say the government premises where there is gardens and, 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 and all those things, the EFF must, must, must employ permanent employees. The EFF says we must have permanent security companies, permanent cleaning companies, permanent coal manufacturing and mining companies that are going to process mine and generate electricity. The EFF is not talking about a solidarity of poverty. Yeah. The EFF is talking about aggressive industrialization. It's there in our manifesto. Yeah. But I don't know, there, there's, this, there's this stigma that whenever the EFF speaks about socialism, they mean that uh, uh, only certain leaders must drive the Range Rovers and then the masses must struggle. But yeah. the EFF is the only organization that is actually interested in real and tangible long-standing and sustainable job and, and, and economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, in this studio, uh, there's so much black. I'm not sure if we had a, a private caucus. <laughs> I would be wearing black. Everyone's wearing black. Uh, Kobisa, maybe your final thoughts on the GNU. Um, we have seen uh, in Gauteng now, um, in Tuane, the, the new mayor, the EFF has voted in favor uh, of the new mayor. And uh, that seeks or seems to be a middle finger to Madame Zile. They are going to fight back. They are going to fight back. It's not going to be easy for Panya. Uh, you know, let me give you an example. Uh, Bambata, in 1906, he fought that he is not going to pay tax in the land of his birth and pay tax to the Queen of England. What they did to Bambata is that they didn't only kill him, they killed him and cut his head, put it uh, on a briefcase and took a picture, made that picture a stamp so that those that are working in the mines, working for tax, money to pay tax, they must know that that little hope they had in Bambata, that Bambata is fighting, at least something might change. So that when they see the head of Bambata on that letter, they know that they must work for white people. So 
That is exactly what is going to happen to, to Banyaza. Mm -hmm. They are going to come all out, and it's unfortunate that Fikile Mbalula is now a hangman of Helen Zil. Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen is that the ANC in its current form, it is shallowed. That's why we are making a call to the ANC Youth League that it's better for them to live today. We are making a call to the SACP that it's just live today. The clothes shops are closed. The likes of Wopanyaza, they can fight as much as they can. That thing, it's closed. So the ANC that of 1969, it's long gone, it's dead. The ANC that is of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, it's no longer the ANC because, like I said, you can't say you have an ANC talking about the ANC that is led by a comrade that was raised by Sarah Woodhouse and the Minels. So those guys are just wasting their time. If they don't understand or appreciate that they are wasting their time, they must ask uh, our president that they tried to fight in the ANC Youth League. They were removed for fighting for what the ANC stood for in 1969. They were removed for that. They were not removed for anything. They were removed for this, this very same ideas. So now that is the ANC of the Rainbow Nation. That is the ANC of celebrating rugby and say it's democracy. Uh, we are united. <laughs> yeah. So... You know, even when he's talking Panyasa Lusufi and say we can't kill a uh, Chrisania again, you can't Chris kill Chrisania again now because the killers of Chrisania are now ministers. Mm -hmm. So those guys are just of those guys of ANC in Houting. They are just wasting their time. The only advice that we can give them now, we, the advices are done. They must <laughs> just leave that thing <laughs> and join the yeah. EFF because. On the other side, they can't go because the other side, you know, they are practicing, they, they call it Zumaism, but it's not Zumaism. They call it, it's Indunaism. Yeah. <laughs> because Indunaism, you don't practice, it's a political organization without offices. You go yeah. where the Induna is. You don't have a constitution. <laughs> the Induna will so. But lastly, oh, no. uh, 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 um, Titus, yeah. there is a dangerous thing that is coming and as forces of the left. We must be quick now to unite South Africans mm -hmm. because you have the Oppenheimer families funding political organization, organizations that undermine internal democracy. Mm -hmm. So if you undermine internal democracy, you are likely to graduate into either a a rebel, you are likely to graduate into the Boko Haram, mm -hmm. you are likely to graduate into um, people who are going to start civil war. Mm -hmm. Because once you fund a political organization that do not respect democracy, you are funding the destabilization of democracy in the country because once they get power, they will never want to go out of power. Yeah. And what will happen? Because they get power with your money, mm -hmm. then instead of going out of power, they will refuse. So you have people who now want to turn this country mm -hmm. into Congo. Because you can't fund a political organization that do not go into conference to elect its leaders. Mm, of course. That, in fact, there must be law to make that illegal because for you to practice in democracy processes, you must appreciate and respect democracy. So the Oppenheimer family do not respect democracy and they are doing everything they can with their billions mm -hmm. to fund anarchy in this country because these political organizations that do not respect internal democracy soon with the money of the Oppenheimers, mm -hmm. they are going to start anarchy not so long and use that money to start anarchy because they are demonstrating that we do not love democracy. And mm -hmm. it is very much questionable for the Oppenheimers to fund them 
They want to turn our country into Congo. Mm -hmm. They want to turn our country into a, a civil war state. Mm -hmm. And ours now, as we gravitate towards the NPA, the third NPA is to defend, rebuild, and advance the struggle for economic freedom. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I almost <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much, Makala, for coming through, Commissar. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much for coming through. So thank you very much, people of South Africa, Africa, and the diaspora for tuning in. This is the EFF podcast. So continue subscribing to the EFF uh, YouTube channel for more on the EFF podcast. My name is Titus Tsungur Kotaram Sengonotoleka. So until we meet again, Buddha, Gwenge, Karma. In socialism, um, shaba, socialism.